Okay, so here's a bit of background. So what is the image image translation? If you think about language, say from hello to Chinese ni hao, actually they're similar. So the right now the input becomes an edge map and the output becomes an RGB image. The conditional GAN is actually input to output, and we're trying to map them. So what are some motivations? Maybe the authors love shopping like this? Or if not, how about March Madness? All right, just kidding. So come back. Actually, the motivation of the conditional GAN the paper is trying to develop is to try to create a general framework for different applications. A non-application specific framework, the conditional GAN is going to be more user friendly. I hope you're familiar with GAN, which has a generator and a discriminator. I'll give a brief definition. So GAN's learn a loss function that tries to classify if the output image is real or fake while simultaneously training a generative model to minimize the loss function. So there are two main parts here. The discriminator is the real fake classifier while the generator wants to minimize the loss. And the CGAN is conditioning on the input image and try to generate a corresponding output image. But anyway, it's always to predict pixels from pixels. In terms of a model, here is the objective function. So the G star generator is trying to do the minimax um, optimization with two parts of the loss functions. So the G wants to minimize loss while the discriminator wants to max as always. And the G is trying to fool the discriminator. So next we'll talk about the two parts separately. In part one, which is the C GAN loss function, in D to maximize the probability of assigning the correct label to both train examples and samples from G while simultaneously train G to minimize the log of one minus D. So the blueprinted letters are what a CGAN is different from an unconditional version. And in CGAN, D actually observes the X, where in the unconditional GAN, it does not. So in part two, which is the L1 loss function. So right now we may ask, why do we need a L1? So actually the generator in this model has two meanings. The first one, G wants to full um, discriminator. And also G wants to be as close as possible to the ground truth. And the second part is why that we want the L1 loss function here. So right now, I hope you have a good understanding of the objective function in general, conditional gap model. Also for your own interests, the G uses the UNET Base architecture, while the discriminator uses a convolutionary patch GAN classifier. I'll talk about the experiments and the results. The authors are trying to test a general framework they test against the following data sets. In the next slide, you're going to see an example. So you can compare the grant truth with the column with the L1 plus C GAN, and you can see how good the um, example is. And also this slide is just a short present of um, the score of the model. And you can see the L1 and CGAN together generates the best scores. If you look into the details of the different data sets that you can see, the authors, they do a good job in trying to develop this general framework without being um, application specific. But there are still more rooms that our researchers can dive into and to study more about the CGAN. After my presentation, you should be able to use conditional GAN to do image to image translation. If you're interested in the paper, please check out the link below, which is the author's GitHub, and you can try and test the model yourself. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.